Blender has a number of capabilities for looking at an image and manipulating various aspects of the image. In addition to size and scaling and like that, Blender can also split an image into what's called channels. And to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and add an image input node. And in your textures image, high def, there's a batch 003 image. This image was taken where there is a lot of orange ambient light. And as you can see in here, the red is on this white tablecloth. The red is fully white, but the green is only half, and the blues are almost non-existent way down there in the um, 13 range. And as you know, uh, yellow and your browns are a combination, and orange is uh, red and half the amount of green. So that's why the image appears like this. So this environment must have been a very orange environment, and, and so all the ambient light was colored orange, and it's colored all the white stuff orange. So we want to do some color correction on this image. And the easiest way to do that is using the RGB Combine and Separate nodes and they are down under the converters and there's a number of different ways and to split out an image into various kinds of channels and what you do is you add the separate and then you're going to eventually have to combine these channels back together so you add the combine node. You can't use just a regular mix node all of these channels are combined using some bizarre mathematical formulas and so uh, you, you need to use the combine node to combine these channels back together again so now we've threaded this up and we have split the image out into its channels. The A is always for alpha and that's the transparency channel if the image format supports it or the render layer obviously always supports that. Then it split out into these four channels and then recombined back through the combined node and then we can see it down here in the viewer. So let's go ahead and start playing with these different channels. The first way I would like to show you is by rethreading the red channel through what we call a color ramp node. And the color ramp node is a converter node that will convert one set of values into another set of values. And you can work with either the gray scale, which is the physical images you see, or the alpha scale, which are alpha values that you set that correspond to each marker that marks along the color ramp node. Now as you can see we've threaded this color ramp node in and so it's presently not doing any translation by default. Black or zero values come in at the left hand side and then we'll be le leaving at the left hand side. And white values over here, white is a 1.0 so any values that come in that map over to the far side or the far right side of this ramp will be mapped out as this 1.0 or full factor. Now we can look at any one of these individual channels just by threading the channel to a viewer node. So as you can see in this black and white representation of the red channel values, you can see that the white is very oversaturated. However, there are some some areas where there's not a lot of red. And you can see over here like the back of this chair, over here on the back of this post, that the red is down around 19 out of 255. So really, all we can really do to reduce the amount of red is maybe to decrease the dynamic range of the reds so that the reds don't cover such a huge range. And the way we do that is simply by grabbing the left marker and dragging it up and now, if there was a medium amount of red, it now would be mapped to zero. So 0.5 is now mapped to zero. If it was one, it's still mapped out to one because we have not changed that marker over there. But anything between these two will be now be scaled down. So we've just reduced the contrast, if you will, of the red dynamic range. The other thing you can do is expand the range of a color. And let's take the greens, for example. If we look at the uh, RGB channels, the greens only get up to about a half and they stay at zero. So really what we want to do is expand the range of the greens. And so we can do that with the color ramp node by duplicating the node and threading it into the green. And now what we want to do 
is we want to say, hey, instead of going from only having a half down here, I really want this to be a one. So if I grab the right hand marker and drag it down, now all of the half greens will be mapped to a full 1.0. So what we've done is we've co corrected the green saturation of this image and we have uh, effectively almost doubled it. And lastly we have the blues and we can see the blues are almost non-existent. <laughs> I guess it's a very cheery picture isn't it because it doesn't have any blues. Um, so what we can do here is we have a couple options. One is we have a math node which converts an input set of values, performs some math function on them and then uh, spits out the value. So if we thread the blue channel with this math node now what we've done is we've added on, no matter what blue came in, we've added on a half. And so we've increased like the base level of any blue. And if blue was like say three quarters, well now it's actually uh, more than that. Or in here in, in where the blues were like one fourth, now you can see they're up to uh, three fourths, where they were almost zero. The other thing we can do is multiply any input value. So now, for example, we actually have been multiplying by half, so actually we've divided the amount of blue in half. What we can do is like multiply the amount of blue by 5, and now that blue value that was uh, 10 or 20 is now, you know, well I guess it was really around 5 huh, or 10, now it's up to 50. And so that's how that we can use the math node to do either adds and multiplies, divides. There's a whole bunch of mathematical functions that you can use. You can even make color scale logarithmically. But the other one I, that I like to use, which is kind of an older node, is called the map value node. And it is under the vector. And this handy little node actually performs four functions for you just with the one node. First of all, it adds or subtracts a value based on this offset value. So in the previous example where we added a half, we can just put a half in here. And now any input value will get added to a half and then will be spit out with a half added on. And if this was a negative value, then it subtracts. Then the next thing it does is based on this size factor, it multiplies that value by this number here. So in the previous example, where we just multiplied by 10 or something like that, now we've multiplied, we haven't added anything to the base value. So if there was no blue to begin with, there will still be no blue. But if there was a little bit of blue, now we've multiplied it by 10. So those values of 10 that were like 13 and 11 and like that, they're now 140 and like that. So we're up into the medium blues, and as you can see, the image has gotten much, much better. The other nice thing, the last nice thing about this map value node is it allows you to clamp the minimum and maximum values that are produced by the node. And when you're dealing with colors, it's always very nice to make sure that you don't put out a value that's less than zero, like a negative color, because that could actually have a negative impact on the colors or you don't want to put out a value that's greater than one for this particular color channel, because that could also affect the way that the color is represented and possibly the combined node might uh, honor or respect a number that's bigger than one and try to oversaturate that color. So I like to use the map value node. And so now you can see that as a, re as a result of using these different kinds of techniques to do color adjustment, we now have a very nice image. There's perhaps some blue shading that's extra here that I don't particularly like and so I might knock that down or uh, also might just um, subtract a little bit from the amount, although I had to be very careful because the blue is so little in this whole image. I don't have a lot of uh, blue range to work with. Enjoy!